everyone and welcome to another video from my narrowboat. If you're new here, my name is Laura and I live on a 48 foot narrowboat called the May Moon and I document my life living on the boat. This week I did want to speak about something a little bit different because over the past year I've shared my experiences with the boat, what it means, the pros and cons, the ups and downs, the renovation, just life on a boat in general. But in the videos you will often see snippets of my practice, whether it's tarot or moon rituals. I mean just looking around at the things that I own and looking at the boat itself, you can tell that I'm a bit woo-woo. Or maybe just from looking at me it's obvious. Or maybe it's not. I, I kind of hope it's not. I like to surprise people. But I have had a few comments here on YouTube asking me to expand on that part of my life and and explain what it is that I'm doing and why I'm doing it. I've even been asked straight up just are you a witch? First of all you shouldn't force people out of the broom closet. And secondly it's a bit more complicated than that and if I'm honest I've massively shied away from openly talking about this not just on this channel but also in my life. I'm weirdly bashful about it and to be honest I just worry that I do a horrific job in explaining myself but I I do believe that the questions that I've had on YouTube asking me to talk about it are genuine. They're from a place of curiosity. It's not ridicule. It's people who genuinely want to learn. And I am getting to a point where I'd like to share more about what I do because it's helped me in so many ways. Perhaps it could help other people too. <laughs> So what is a witch? What is a pagan? Before I even get into my personal beliefs and what this all means for me, I think we need to define the terms because most people when they think of a witch they think of a black cat and a pointy hat and flying on a broomstick and probably Harry Potter or something like that. And when it comes to paganism, druidism, heathenism, there is no rigidly defined doctrine because they were essentially dead religions. I believe paganism was a Norse religion that was brought here with the Norse invasion. This is not a history lesson, I'm not a historian, so I'm not really gonna go into all of that. The rise of modern witchcraft and the rise of what people call Wicca was popularized in the 1940s and is largely based on occultism. So it kind of blends myth, legend, paganism, and even throws in a bit of entertainment, but you know, every faith has its flair. The point is that paganism was a long-standing religion so it's an ancient practice that is very much weaved into the history of the British Isles, the ancestry, the traditions, and a lot of our modern day Christian festivals are, shall we say, borrowed from paganism. All of that is one reason why I find it hilarious when people are worried about the dominant religion in this country being overtaken by another religion. It's already happened, it's too late! <laughs> So isn't this all a bit silly? <laughs> this is a comment that I've had a lot and it's one reason why I don't talk about this stuff because everyone has a preconceived notion of what it means. They tend to think that if you're interested in it or that you have legitimized it in any way, they think you're a bit mad. I just want to read you the UK Parliament's definition of witchcraft. Witchcraft, a perceived faculty to summon evil spirits and demons to do harm to others, was linked to religion to the extent that the medieval church had powers to punish those who dabbled in magic and sorcery. During the 16th century, many people believed that witchcraft, rather than the working of God's will, silly them, witchcraft over the working of God's will, idiots and witch hunting became an obsession of the country in 1542 parliament passed the witchcraft act which defined witchcraft as a crime punishable by death it was repealed five years later but restored in a new act make up your mind so the formal accusations against witches who were usually poor elderly women reached a peak in the late 16th century particularly in the southeast of england 513 witches were put to trial there though only only 112 were executed overall 500 people in england are believed to have been executed for witchcraft there were so many more in europe everyone thinks that salem is the epicenter of witch trials and witch executions. The important bit there is at the beginning. Most of these so-called witches were older women, often childless women, people thought to be heretics, outcasts, those who didn't go with the church, those who were interested in the power of things like plants instead of the power of 
prayer. I mean, if witches didn't exist, then who did we burn? People posit science as a rationale against believing anything. As though science itself has never dabbled in things like alchemy, astrology, plenty of things that we're unable to explain. Isaac Newton spent a great deal of his scientific career dedicated to alchemy. And who knows, perhaps his interest in alchemy, now considered occult, not science, it may well have played into his other research. I mean, just because we have an equation for gravity doesn't mean that we know what it is or how it works. We just know how much versus how big versus how far away. But plenty of great artists, scientists, philosophers, musicians have been interested and inspired by occultism. Carl Jung, Geiger, Jimmy Page, Sherlock Holmes, yes, I know he's fictional, Darren Brown, David Bowie, Alistair Crowley, slightly problematic, and one of my own personal heroes, filmmaker Maya Deren. But look, I'm not attempting to legitimise modern day witchcraft via science. No other mainstream religions are asked to do this. They are based purely on faith. And although mainstream religions have their fair share of critics and ridicule, which I think is more than fair enough, they also have plenty of people who, although they don't believe or follow the religion, they do respect it. They understand that people are looking for some sense of purpose, faith, even in some ways control in their lives and at least to just recognize a pattern amongst the chaos but when it comes to paganism and witchcraft people aren't quite so kind there aren't many people who think that paganism and witchcraft are legitimate belief systems which again i do think is fair because it's not mainstream it is unusual and we really fear the things that we don't understand but like i said at the top of this video there's things that i do in my life that are part of my practice really small things you are already doing them you just don't know that you're doing them So do I consider myself religious? Well, my description of my belief system tends to fall into three categories, really. You've got spiritual, religious and occult. So there are people who describe themselves as spiritual and this could be describing anything from people who are maybe Christian, agnostic, they might believe in angels, they might believe in something, they just don't know what it is. At the other end of the spectrum there's just our crystal girlies, people who maybe just have a bit of interest in like Reiki or whatever it might be. Religious is more self-explanatory, those tend to be people with a more structured belief system and often describes those with a mainstream religion or a majority religion. And then there's the occult. For me, the occult is an interest because not everything to do with witchcraft and paganism is occultism and vice versa. Some things purely come from Victorian parlor magic, but it's still fun for me. It's not necessarily things that I believe in, but it's things that I find interesting and I find fun. And so sometimes the aesthetic of that kind of bleeds into what I do as well. And that's just because I like it. <laughs> and honestly, I think I'm somewhere in between all three of those categories, somewhere between spiritual, religious, and having an interest in the occult. I think spiritual is a bit of a flimsy descriptor and has a bit of a bad rap, but for the complete opposite reasons, the term religions doesn't fit with me either. I don't know what I describe myself as. <laughs> So do I believe in magic? Do I do magic spells? Well, if I told your average person on the street that I'm a witch, they'd probably have a very distinct idea of what that means in practice. It would be potions, magic spells, riding on a broomstick, <laughs> wands, evil spirits and demons, and being burned at the stake. Which incidentally, burning alive is my biggest fear and I don't know where that comes from, so. But being a witch doesn't mean that I believe in evil spirits, riding on a broomstick. It doesn't even necessarily mean that I believe in things like crystal healing or fortune telling. The limit of your own personal belief system and how far that stretches cannot be dictated by a word, whether it's Christian or witch or Muslim or Hindu or something else. My mother puts Christian on every single census every time it comes around and I don't think that woman set foot inside a church since I was christened. It's a good example of how your descriptor isn't even necessarily describing your belief system. Some people are just culturally Christian. For me, paganism is the language which I've chosen to describe how I move through the world. Since I was a feral child running about in fields and meadows and climbing up trees and building dens, I've had a rich and deep continuous conversation with nature itself. For me, nature was never just there. It was a thing that I believed to be alive and conscious and around me all the time and aware of me. <laughs> when I was about nine or ten, I plaited a lock of hair and I cut it off and gave it to a tree. <laughs> 
<laughs> I was a weird kid. I believe that paganism teaches us that life is. As within nature, nothing is good nor evil. Morality only lives inside of us. If the fox doesn't kill the chicken, the fox will starve. I certainly don't believe that you can control nature or other people or the future to a certain extent. I'll get into that in a second. What I can control is my own perspective and my own actions. And after all, my vision of the world is the world. What is the world if not through my eyes? It doesn't exist to me. Ritual and ceremony is vital to human beings. We have been using festival and ceremonies since time immemorial. Is a wish not a spell? Is a cake recipe not a spell? Is a prayer not a spell? A spell is simply setting an intention. I believe that the use of elements grounds your sense and makes your subconscious more engaged with the intention that you're setting. For example, we are far more likely to complete to-do lists that are handwritten. Bringing an idea into the physical can help it manifest. It can help you cement those ideas into reality and bring them to fruition by creating rituals that set those intentions aloud. And again, this spectrum of belief can go from anything from it worked because I was open to new experiences and I was more likely to meet someone new because I was open to that all the way to it worked because I set my intention with a higher power the universe and I'm somewhere in the middle I do believe that everything we do influences everything that we receive to me that's obvious I don't think that's particularly controversial but I don't believe that things are mapped out I don't believe that things are set in stone I don't believe in a rigid fate. Perhaps serendipity, yes, but I don't believe that your life is completely mapped out. I believe that the decisions that you make impact your future or what will happen all of the time. And if we don't have an already determined fate, then it has to be true that every action has a result of some kind. Every decision we make, no matter how big or small, and sometimes those small innocuous decisions can lead to some big outcomes. So yes, I believe in ritual, I believe in ceremony, cementing ideas and manifesting them into the physical and I believe that doing this will ultimately affect your ability to bring things into the physical and that's why it's called a practice. Have you ever had a gut feeling? Have you ever really known something? That's called intuition. What is intuition if not witchcraft? Sometimes you just know that you're on the right path or the wrong path and you just know even in very, in very small ways and you've got no evidence to back it up. You just have that feeling. I mean, it absolutely could just be confirmation bias. It could be a confidence trick. Perhaps you've conned yourself into believing that you have some semblance of control in what is actually a very chaotic and random universe. But if it works, it works. And for me, it works. I believe fundamentally that some people are born with better intuition than others. But I also believe that through the things that I do, through being in touch with nature, and therefore myself and my body and my instincts, you can learn to be more intuitive. You can hone that gut instinct. And that really changes the decisions that you make and leads you to manifest the desires that you have when you set those intentions into the physical. That's what I believe. You could have just skipped to this part of the video, to be honest, because that's it. That's the whole thing. And I live and feel by the seasons and by the moon. And that's one reason why I like doing things like moon rituals, the festivities of the wheel of the year. Not only am I ruled by the moon, most likely so are you. I understand that it sounds strange, but it is well documented that prime goes up around a full moon. Hospitals literally have more staff on duty around a full moon. And again, this could be a very long tied in bodily instinct because during the full moon. We probably had more illumination at night. Therefore, we were more active at night and it's just kind of stuck in the same way that you don't need to look at the clock to sort of know what the time is. But once you start noticing the pattern, I can really see how the moon affects me. I know when I'm going to be in a good mood throughout the month, depending on what the moon's doing. And again, it could be a placebo, but it works for me. So, am I a witch? Yes, I am a witch. Probably so are you by my definition at least. And everyone's definition will vary. Do I ride around on a broomstick and do I have a pointy hat and a black cat? No, I don't. Do I want all of those things? Yes, I absolutely do. What I do believe is that rituals are more important than habits. Aligning your energy with the natural cycles of the earth and the sky will make you more instinctual 
more productive and I think happier. I mean, a lot of modern life is geared towards going against nature. And when I say nature, I don't just mean the plants and the trees. I mean just living within the natural world. It's only in the last couple of hundred years that we've even had artificial light at night. I also have a keen and long-standing interest in the occult and witchcraft. And some of that interest isn't belief. It's just pure interest. It's intrigue and it it's entertainment. What I do very much believe is the power of plants. I like foraging and I believe that in life, just as in nature, there is no good, there is no bad, and how I choose to define it. I strongly believe in the idea of free will and undetermined fate, and I strongly, strongly believe that it's unethical to try and trick, coerce, or manipulate someone in any form. And I believe in karma, so yes, I do believe that when you do bad things, they do come back on you. A lot of people are very accepting of the idea of karma, but you know, I understand that the idea of paganism and everything that I've just talked about and witchcraft and all of that sounds weird, especially if you're completely unfamiliar with it. And yeah, I think a lot of people shy away from exploring it because it is strange or it's perceived to be strange. And that's one reason why I don't really talk about it too much. But honestly, it's something that I've been interested in for over 20 years of my life. I think I got my first proper book on witchcraft when I was about 11. I would save all of my pocket money and I would go to the local plink Plinky Plinky shop, which is what I call those kind of esoteric shops. And it's remained a pretty consistent through line to describe the way that I move through the world and the things that I'm interested in and how I see the world. Sometimes when I've been incredibly lost within myself, just being in nature has really grounded me back. And I think, I think that's probably the same for everyone. I'm not special in that regard, but I just might describe it differently or I might lean into it differently than other people do. For me, that's part of my practice. Everything that I do from doing a money bowl spell to running my hand over a blade of grass, as long as there's conscious intention there, it's part of the practice. A good example is baking. I absolutely love baking cakes. All of the cakes that I designed, the ingredients were based on their magical properties and they were baked with intent. I love tarot, it's my party trick. And again, I don't think that I'm necessarily, you know, telling the future, but it is a great tool to understand and get other people to understand how they actually feel about things. I've had tarot readings where people have literally burst into tears because the cards for them have just made so much sense. And I like the spoils. I love a candle, I love a crystal, I love a cauldron, I love a bit of incense. And living on the boat has very much deepened my practice as well. One thing that I love is having a fire. There's a great example of how I weave something like witchcraft into my everyday, is my homemade fire lighters. What I will do is forage for dry bits of forest floor, twigs, pine cones, bracken, and I'll write my intentions down on a piece of paper and these will form the base, like a cupcake holder, for the bracken to sit in. I then pour wax, usually from a candle that has a colour with significant meaning or intention to it. And then when I light the fire, I'll think of what's written on the paper. So those particular fire lighters that I just showed you, all of the intentions written on the piece of paper were good wishes to those in my life. And I like to think that when I relight the fire, the smoke carries those good intentions to the people that they're intended for. So if you're in my life and over winter, you suddenly got a warm feeling, you're welcome. Believe it or not, I even manifested the boat itself. I believe I did anyway. I'd been looking for a boat for a very long time. I just wasn't getting that feeling Feeling, that feeling that everyone told me I would have, that this is the one feeling. I took a trip down to Cornwall and went to St Nectan's Glen, which I think is one of the most magical places I've ever been. And I just set my intentions. And within a week, I found my boat. One thing that I'm really wanting to do is to make this a series on this channel. I'd like to show people how to incorporate witchcraft and magic into their lives in very small but significant ways that are helpful to you. You don't have to go whole hog. You don't have to get on the broomstick. You don't have to even believe in the things that I believe in, but there are little things that you can do that adds a mindfulness practice to your everyday. There are bigger things. I, I can show you how to do spells if that's what you'd like to see. I don't think anyone should be gatekeeping this kind of thing. I think it should be shared. I think it should be more mainstream. I think reconnecting to nature in particular is something that we're all craving and exploring the old ways of doing things and weaving rituals and ceremony into your life, like I say, is way more powerful than habits for me. And it can be fun. It can be motivating. And I promise you, if you're the kind of person who is open to trying new things, 
you're the kind of person that it will work for. So thank you again for watching one of my videos. I know that this is very different to the kind of videos that I usually do, completely different subject. I'm not ready for the comments, but I'm going to put it out anyway. I'm just going to be brave. I don't even like talking about this necessarily in my own life because I think a lot of people just want to catch you out and just prove you wrong somehow. And you would never do that to someone who is from another type of religion. I accept why that is. Fair enough. If you want to make fun of me, you can go ahead because I don't take myself or anything too seriously anyway. So it doesn't really matter. Or maybe I'll just put a spell on you. So if you're new here, if this is something that is interesting to you, please, please comment. I would love to hear what your thoughts are. I would especially love to hear if this is something that's interesting to you and you'd like to see more of it. I'm going to need to hear that encouragement in the comments before I speak on it again. Otherwise, I'm just going to pretend I never did this. And again, if you are interested in this, if you would like to see more, please subscribe. It's a series that I've wanted to do for ages and it does tie into the boat stuff. I feel like there's not a huge amount of people on YouTube who are sort of talking about this right now. I don't really see the kind of representation that I'm looking for. Thank you again for watching and hopefully I'll see you again.